how to stop feeling not good enough. If I were to reflect on the one biggest core struggle that I've been healing from these past few years, it's this internal feeling of not being good enough. It's this lack of self-worth, it's self-criticism, being really hard on myself, having high expectations on myself, comparing myself to others, just feeling smaller than others and not feeling like I'm as good enough as others. And a lot of other issues stem from that internal insecurity. And so that's something that I've been working to heal from for many, many years. So hi, what's up? My name is Eileen. Welcome back to Lab and Dare. Today, I want to talk about how to stop feeling not good enough. Like I mentioned, this is a big theme in my life and I'd like to shed some light on it because I've done so much healing and so much work in this area. Before I get started on the tips, I just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already click that bell down below so you're notified of all my new videos on personal growth and lifestyle design so the first tip to healing your self-worth is to change your beliefs you for some reason have been led to believe that you are not good enough and that's why you operate from that belief system that you're not good enough so that's kind of the first place you have to tackle is like let's change that belief because a belief is not fact it's simply just a belief it's an opinion right it's not like absolutely true that you're not good enough it's just something that you were led or taught to believe at some point in your life so you can change it so the first place i like to start with changing your beliefs is changing your self-talk so a lot of your insecurities and all these self-worth issues are entangled with that negative self-talk that happens in your head so the first step is to reflect and kind of reset the those negative things that you say to yourself stop being being so mean to yourself, stop being your own worst critic, this is really the time to start giving yourself positive compliments, positive self-talk, positive feedback. And at first it's gonna feel really uncomfortable, it's gonna feel really fake because you don't believe it just yet. But you just have to push through that awkward phase because on the other side, you'll eventually truly start to believe those positive things and you're gonna operate from a more positive belief system. An exercise I've shared in the past is to write down all the negative things that you typically tell yourself in your mind so keep like on your notes on your phone um, just a list of you know when a negative thought pops up write it down and, you know go about your days like maybe for a week do this jot down all the negative thoughts or negative self-talk that you notice pop up in your mind write it down so that you become at least aware of the things that you're constantly saying to yourself by the end of the week you'll have a page of your typical negative thoughts and then you can start to like cross each one out and then replace it with the positive thought that's kind of the opposite of the negative one and then just start to repeat those positive thoughts to yourself every single day do it like positive affirmations say those positive affirmations to yourself in front of a mirror do this the more you do this the faster you'll be able to ingrain it into your belief system because repetition truly is key to shaping your beliefs another resource that I always love to share are my positive affirmation videos that way you don't have to like come up with affirmations yourself you can just listen to the video every single day try doing it for like 21 days because that's like enough time to start building a habit and by then you'll like have those affirmations memorized in your brain like the more you memorize it the more you repeat it that's when it really just melts into your subconscious and it truly starts to become who you are and what you believe moving on to tip number two be the person that you want to be this is about changing your identity recognizing that it's possible to change your identity all you have to do is decide 
to be that person and then start to take actions and act like that person that you want to be, it's actually something that we have so much more control over than we think. You don't have to stay the same person forever. You don't have to be like the victim to your mind and your insecurities. You can choose to be like, hey, I choose to be the confident person. Again, it's one of those like, even if it might feel fake or awkward at first, just be it and then everything else will follow. I spoke at a conference recently and another one of the speakers was my friend Tim and he shared this concept that I think applies here. Humans typically operate from thinking first and then that leads to doing and then that leads to being. So people typically think that in order to change, they have to move from thinking to doing and then to being, meaning you have to think about changing and then you have to do those actions to make that change and then you eventually become you know, what you thought about. So although that is kind of like, I guess the typical flow or what comes natural, what we naturally think happens, you want to instead flip it. It's possible to start to be that person. And from that state of being, you then do, and then it becomes your thoughts. Essentially, you can choose to change your identity and operate from a different state of being. And from that state of being flows everything else, like the actions and the thoughts. And that is much more powerful. And I would say faster to make a change to just be like, I'm just gonna be this person. And then everything else flows from there instead of, oh, let me think about it first. Let me see how to get there. An example of this would be choosing to be the main character of your story. I made that video about how to be the main character of your life. All it is, is an energy that you embody, that you are the main character. You have this confidence to do what you want and live your life. And you don't have to be shy because like you are the main character. So that is an example of just choosing to be an identity, like changing your identity to be something else, and then everything else flows from there. Look how cute Togi is. He loves to lay on top of the couch like a cat. I swear he was a cat in his past life. <laughs> Look at him, he went to lay on that side now. Seriously? He didn't want to be in my video. <laughs> Look at there. The third tip on how to stop feeling not good enough is to do some shadow work. So reflect deeply on where your self-worth and self-esteem issues stem from. So this can include journaling, which is probably my favorite way to do this deep reflection, but you can also do it in meditation or it might happen you know as you go about life where things trigger you and you're reminded of the story in your head of why you don't feel good enough but the kind of questions you want to be asking yourself are questions like who or what taught me that i wasn't good enough when did i start to believe this who gave me this idea when did it start to become a part of my belief system? Like when did I honestly believe that that was true? And why did I begin to believe that it was true? Maybe there was a spark that made you consider this idea in the first place, like an event, some, something someone said to you. And then maybe there was like a chain of events where that belief was somehow kind of like you know, ingrained or what's it called, hammered into you for some reason, whether it's like a toxic parent or life circumstances. Like there's so many different ways that this story can form and each person is unique in their story. But this is the place where, you know, all of us have healing work to do. All of us have trauma that we have to heal from. I don't think any person in the world is free of that. So healing is truly a a lifelong journey. I believe you heal your wounds in cycles and you kind of come back to heal those same wounds but kind of in a different form. For example, with my self-worth journey, there were things that I had to heal from regarding my relationship with my dad and I've talked about that in a lot of other videos on healing. In the beginning, healing from these things, it's so painful. You're avoiding it. It's so uncomfortable. Like any mention of this person or this relationship just makes you want to break down and cry. 
And then, you know, each time you heal, it's kind of like you're breaking down the layers of that pain and those wounds. Even though I'm still working on my self-worth, I'm still healing, it's still a journey, but it feels lighter and lighter as you continue to heal. You'll come back around and something will trigger you again and you're like, oh my gosh, I still have to heal this aspect or like, oh, this is something I didn't notice. So be gentle with yourself, be patient. It's a process. We're all going through this in our own way. And that's why I always like to, you know, not judge other people. You never know what someone else is going through or dealing with. So just be kind and compassionate to everyone, including yourself, most importantly, yourself. If you want an actionable exercise that you can do right after this video, definitely check out my limiting beliefs exercise. So I shared a video about the concept as well as a free worksheet that you can download to start to work through your limiting beliefs and get to the core of where they come from. This is essentially shadow work. You know, get to the core and then start to change those beliefs. It's a lot of what we're talking about today, but in an actionable format. All right, my next tip on how to stop feeling not good enough is to make self-love your number one priority. I honestly feel like most people, if not all people, should be putting self-love as their number one priority because everything else flows from there. Like if you give yourself love, you'll be able to be a loving person and give love to others. Like you have to fill your own cup first. So prioritize this relationship that you have with yourself, nurture yourself, give back to yourself, make sure that you take care of yourself first and foremost and just give yourself all the love kindness and compassion that you can because if you truly have like a lot of self-love you won't be able to feel bad about yourself it's like those two things cannot coexist because when you're not feeling good enough and when you're self-criticizing and you're just being your own worst enemy that's not self-love it's like they cannot coexist. So just instead of operating from that place of like emptiness, like, oh, I'm so small, I'm not good enough. Like just fill that cup until it's overflowing so that you don't have room for any negative energy or negative thoughts. Try asking yourself every single day, how can I love myself better? How can I love myself better? And then let the answers flow out. Okay, maybe I can give myself a little time for self-care today. Maybe I want to take myself out on a date. Maybe I wanna buy flowers for myself, chocolate for myself. Like, just think of all the ways that you can love yourself better. How can you be a better best friend, a better number one supporter, a better lover to yourself? So operate from a place where you prioritize self-love number one. If you want some ways to start putting this into practice, you can definitely check out my self-love meditation and you can also try something called self-love journaling which i just made up that term i'm sure other people have said it before but basically in a self-love journaling session you would just sit down and write nice things to yourself how weird is that right like write yourself a love letter tell yourself nice compliments what do you like about yourself what do you love about yourself start with like 10 things that you love about yourself and for some that might be really hard for others it might be easy so you know do what works for you but that's a fun place to start is literally try being a lover and writing a love letter to yourself. This is something that we have an entire section of the Artist of Life workbook on. There's a whole section for self-love, 10 things you love about yourself, how to you know figure out what success means to you, fulfilling life means to you, learning about yourself. All of these self-reflection exercises are in the Artist of Life workbook if you have not checked it out already. I'll link it down below. As you can tell by now, like I've been doing Lavender for I don't know how many years, seven or eight years. I have so many resources like for each tip I have so many resources that I could direct you guys to to help you in your journey to self-love and creating your dream life I hope it's not too much but I just have so much to share my next tip is to create distance from the things that make you feel bad about yourself aka boundaries so this could mean taking some time off social media if that's what makes you feel bad about yourself. Like if you tend to compare yourself to others that you see on Instagram or TikTok, like just stop it. The best thing to do is to just get off 
and live your life in the present moment. Appreciate who you are and what you have here and now instead of you know wanting all these things that you don't have and thinking other people's lives are better. Envy and jealousy is not the kind of energy you want to bring. You don't want to have the energy where you feel like other people are above you. You put others on a pedestal, thus making yourself feel smaller, lower, or not good enough. That is not the energy we want. So try to cut anything out that makes you feel that way. So social media is one. Another one is like toxic people in your life. I know everyone's circumstance is different. Like if it's family members or if it's peers. So just do your best to create distance as much as you can. You want to have that protective boundary. You want that space where you can not feel influenced and not feel pressure from those external forces because they're not helping you feel better about yourself. So the more distance and space that you can create, the better until you're able to like give yourself enough love and heal. You know, in the future, you might not need to create that much distance. It might be like, like, you know, if this is someone close to you, but you want to create distance, know that it doesn't have to be forever. This can be temporary. Like you, maybe you just want your space now, work on yourself, feel good about yourself, and then maybe in the future you can, you know, be friends with that person again or be okay with your parents' relationship again. The next tip that will help you on your self-worth journey is to practice coming back to your true self. So I'm talking about the spiritual journey. Do things that make you come back to your soul, make you come back to the truest part of you. So you can do meditation, you can go out into nature, Think about the things that you do that bring you joy, where you feel alive, where you feel really good, just naturally, just flowing with life and enjoying life. Those are the things that bring you back to your true self. And the more you're able to have a practice of coming back to yourself and getting in touch with your soul and your spirit, the more at peace you will feel, the more joyful you will feel. And when you have those things, you recognize just how worthy you are, just how worthy and beautiful life is, and you start to care less about all those other little things that typically bother you. Oh my god, there's a rainbow. Okay, like literally, that's a sign to me right now. Like if you can connect with nature in any form, like what's happening right now, like you'll be reminded at how amazing and mysterious and wonderful nature is. Like nature is so beautiful. Our world, our universe is so beautiful, right? So don't forget that you as a living being are connected to nature. Not only are you connected to nature, you are nature. You are a part of all of this. And there's so much beauty and worth in that that is innate. It cannot be taken away. Literally, if you look at the stars, like you have the stars in you, the same materials that make the stars make you, and the same life force that goes through everything, animals, the, the rivers, the mountains, like all of that is also in you. It's like amazing. You can't take that away. You're worthy, so worthy, without even doing anything. And that brings me to the last point that I want to make. My last reminder for you is to remember that your worth is innate. Like you are so worthy, nobody, nothing can take away your worth simply by existing, simply by being alive. There's so much worth in that, right? Think of a baby, a baby is born and all of these people around the baby like love the baby. Like, oh my God, so cute, <laughs> right? Because the baby is just a beautiful thing. It doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to prove itself. It's already something that's so valuable, something so precious that people risk their lives to take care of and protect. They're not being productive, but simply that fact that it's a life is a beautiful thing. 
And I think of puppies, like puppies don't have to do anything, but they're already naturally so lovable and so cute. People naturally love them. So think of yourself in that way. Any living being is so worthy without even trying. Just simply by existing, you are already worthy. So why do you feel like you're not worthy? Why do you not feel like you're not worthy enough? It all goes back to everything we talked about in this video. I hope you can do those exercises to kind of release those limiting beliefs, those negative thoughts that might be holding you back because on the other side is like you being able to connect with nature, be a part of nature, recognize that you are a part of this wonderful thing called life and the universe and nature. And there's so much worth in that. All right, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. I truly hope that you find true self-love and true self-acceptance and that you recognize how worthy and how beautiful you really are. Remember that all the resources that I mentioned today are linked down below. There's so much more content to check out, self-love meditations, positive affirmations, worksheets and exercises, as well as our new Artist of Life workbook that I'm super excited about. It's definitely the guidebook that you want to have to start preparing for the new year to have a beautiful 2023 and to take those baby steps to get closer and closer towards your goals and your dream life all right make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one sending you so much love bye